All right, I hope everyone has their tea or whatever relaxing beverage that they would like to enjoy. While I quickly talk about this new publication that just came out on February 24th, 2023, and today is February 28th, 2023. The title of this publication is The Isolation and Characterization of Impurities in Commercially Marketed Delta-8 THC Products. Um, I'm going to talk about what these authors found in this study and why it's relevant to the cannabis industry and cannabis consumers. This was published in the Journal of Natural Products, which is one of my favorite journals. Um, all right. So first, we should discuss what is Delta-8 THC um, and what is Delta-9 THC? What are these different types of THC? So when you see something marketed as Delta-8 THC, it often doesn't say that it's synthetically produced, but it is. The plant does produce uh, pretty low levels of Delta-8 THC naturally, but this is not the product that you're consuming if you're consuming Delta-8 products. Delta-8 THC products are synthesized from CBD. So whoever these scientists are, are taking pure CBD isolate, exposing it to heat and acid, and chemically synthesizing Delta-8 THC. So Delta-8 THC is legal because of essentially this loophole in the 2018 Farm Bill, um, where they really didn't specify their language well enough to determine that Delta-9 THC is illegal, but Delta-8 THC is just different enough to be legal. Some states have modified their laws so that Delta-8 is not legal anymore, um, but that's details for another video. So what's the difference between Delta-8 THC and Delta-9 THC? It's literally as simple as one simple double bond, the position of it. So I'm going to show the molecules here. And we see on the top here, this is Delta-9 THC. This molecule is the molecule that is organically produced in high levels in cannabis cultivars and different plants. Um, this compound, you'll notice it's completely the same as the compound below it, except for the position of one single double bond that I've highlighted in red. In Delta-9 THC, the position of that double bond is like this, with the methyl being right here. And in Delta-8 THC, it's on the other side. So it's literally the position of one double bond that changes it from Delta-9 THC to Delta-8 THC. Because these molecules are so, so, so similar, they have very similar pharmacology as well. So they're going to work really similar in your body. We have evidence for this that, um, and actually Delta 8 has been used in different medical studies because we've been limited with our ability to study Delta 9 THC. Um, but essentially, Delta 9 THC and Delta 8 THC, both of them activate your cannabinoid 1 receptors as a partial agonist and they can both get you high. They are psychoactive. They can make you feel high. So inherently, Delta 8 THC is not a bad molecule by any means. There's no molecule. It's a bad molecule. Um, the issues arise because this molecule is produced via synthesis in a laboratory rather than produced organically by the plant. So although the plant is producing really low levels of Delta-8 THC, the products that you're taking have been synthesized. They have not been isolated from the cannabis plant like most other cannabis products. So again, it's not inherently bad by any means because a lot of people who don't have access to cannabis medicine in their state because of legal regulations are trying Delta-8 as the only legal alternative. Um, the issue here and what this paper is really focusing on is via the synthesis product process, it's not just Delta-8 that's being produced. It's many different molecules that are produced as byproducts during the synthesis process. And the big question that everybody's been asking is, are these residual solvents, are these byproducts from the synthesis actually present in the final product that you're putting in your body? The reason that's concerning is because we have absolutely no idea and no data on what these other compounds could be and what their potential pharmacology has been. Between December 1st, 2020 and February 28th, 2022, the FDA received over 100 reports of 
adverse effects that people were experiencing from using Delta 8 THC products. And this can include anything from headaches to nausea to vomiting to losing consciousness, etc. So it is a serious topic and I'm really, really happy to see this publication come out. So we're going to dive into what this publication says. And anytime I'm talking about a figure, I'm just going to put the figure up here so you know uh, what I'm referring to. The authors were evaluating a Delta 8 THC distillate that is commercially available. So in theory, this distillate should have just had Delta 8 THC in it, and it shouldn't have had any other compounds specifically in like appreciable amounts. If there was anything else, you would expect it to be in pretty low amounts, but that is not what they found. So not only did they find some known compounds that were actually naturally occurring in the cannabis plant, such as CBD, CBN, THCV, and HHC, they also found a variety of different molecules that were absolutely present because of the synthesis process. So these could either be byproducts of synthesis or intermediates of that synthesis, but either way, they're molecules that should not be there. And you might be thinking, is that common? Is that, you know, is that something that happens during synthesis? It absolutely is. But the difference is most times when you're synthesizing a product, when you're finished synthesizing that, you're checking that for purity. And if it's not pure enough, you follow through with further purification steps to make sure that your final product is what you say it is. And if you say it's a single compound, it should be a single compound. So um, what they found is these the people that were manufacturing Del Delta 8 THC were not removing these byproducts. And the, the final product did have um, many different compounds that should not have been there in the product. So as for the other compounds that were isolated, but identified as compounds that are not naturally occurring from the cannabis plant, um, I'll show the figure up here, but these compounds um, are compounds that we don't know anything about. So one kind of okay thing about them, which makes me feel a little bit better, is most of these compounds are relatively similar to molecules that are naturally occurring in the plant. They have that overall scaffold of what a cannabinoid should look like, um, but the issue is that they are not naturally occurring and we know absolutely nothing about the pharmacology of these molecules. So you'll see some of them have structures that really resemble THC and some that more resemble uh, CBD. But I guess, as I'm saying, the one benefit is they are like, in structurally very similar to cannabinoids. As a reminder, there's still molecules in the cannabis plant that we have not fully characterized, we have not identified, but the difference is when there's unknowns on a chromatogram that is from a plant, at least we know that that plant in mother nature made those molecules, not some scientist in a laboratory throwing some acid at some pure molecules and hoping for the best. Um, and again, the relative amount of these, I think, is what is concerning. Um, because if we show the chromatogram here, the largest peak is delta-8 THC. So in theory, a pure, perfect-looking chromatogram should be flat, and then a peak where delta-8 THC is, and then nothing else. Because that peak corresponds to the absorbance of that single molecule. So when we see all these other peaks on the chromatogram, each one of those corresponds to a different molecule. So that's the concern here, is that there's all these different molecules in relatively high quantities, abundance, um, that we don't know anything about. And they could be responsible for some of these adverse effects that people are experiencing from Delta-8 THC products. One other thing I'll say about that though, is many Delta-8 THC products are marketed and sold at higher doses compared to Delta-9 naturally occurring in dispensary um, products. And because of that, some of the adverse effects may just come from taking too much of a product. Like if you take too much of a regular Delta-9 THC, you might get anxiety because you're too high. And that can be kind of similar if you're taking too much of a Delta-8 product as well. And anxiety was one of the adverse effects that was reported to the FDA. 
So what these authors did is they actually purified and isolated all of these different molecules that were not supposed to be in this Delta 8 THC product. That might sound kind of easy, but it's very, very difficult. So they physically isolated each pure compound and then characterized it via HPLC, mass spec, and NMR. And then they published the structures and the NMR and the, and the mass spec, everything, so that when in the future people want to test their Delta 8 THC products, or in the future, if researchers want to um, test these different byproducts to see if they have any adverse effects or maybe if they have any beneficial effects, um, they'll be able to identify them a lot faster compared to just starting with a bunch of unknowns. So this research is really important uh, moving forward because now we can have standards when we're looking for these compounds. Now we know that it's not just random byproducts. We know what these byproducts are for at least the distillate that these authors purchased. And hopefully we can get some safer products in the future or we could just legalize and have access to real cannabis medicine for everyone so we don't need to use synthetically derived uh, products for our medicine.